If you're considering purchasing Starlink, but you are concerned about how it's going to perform on a property with a lot of trees, you may find this video to be very helpful. The short answer is yes, it does work. But as they say, el diablo está en los detalles. So keep watching. First, it's imperative that I describe this property to you so that you understand the conditions that we're dealing with. And then I'll move on to how Starlink has performed in the past few weeks. Welcome to the Northwoods, 30 plus acres of pristine, Idaho forested land. Now, the exact reason I moved here happens to be the obstacle we are fighting, the trees. And in case you didn't know it, you're supposed to give your Starlink dish a perfectly clear line of sight into the sky in order to achieve high speed internet. Like most properties in this type of environment, the area that is most clear from trees is exactly where the cabin sits, except for the tree farm part, which is kind of an oxymoron because the trees are a lot smaller back there but it's way too far to run a cable. So the first choice of location to mount the dish is gonna be on the roof of the cabin. Now, normally this is gonna provide an advantage because you have a starting height, but I also have a lot of trees that are very close to the cabin and they're also very tall. In fact, I have a ponderosa pine that is over 100 feet tall. So my opponent is very formidable. So I got up there and I ran the test using the app. And I was quite hopeful because as I scanned the sky, I could see that there was not much being blocked by the trees. But as soon as I finished, I got this notification. You may want to find a better spot. This location is 4.53% obstructed. Even small obstructions can cause consistent interruptions. My heart sinks because there is no better spot. Aside from taking on a substantial operation to get this dish mounted up in a tree, which I have seen other people have done, this is it. And here's something to note, being in the Northern Hemisphere, the dish is supposed to point towards the North, which did actually give me a slight advantage. So I said to myself, I at least need to test it here because anything else is going to incur quite a bit of work. And lo and behold, by the grace of Elon, it works. Now I'll start in with the details of how Starlink has performed. My speeds are not overly impressive for what others might be getting with Starlink or what you might get with your standard fiber internet. I ran frequent speed tests at various times during the day, both using the Google speed test and the Starlink test, as well as with sunny skies and with cloudy skies. And it's interesting that the numbers are always changing, but they generally did fall within a range. I'm getting about 40 to 80 for download and getting about five to nine for upload. As I said, those speeds might sound moderate or even slow, but that is substantially better than what I was getting with my previous internet service provider. The speeds I was getting before were far less than half of that and that was on a clear sunny day. If it was cloudy, rainy, or snowing, the speeds decreased, and not to mention it completely dropped out constantly. And it would also just drop a device randomly throughout the day. So for a guy that works from home and has greatly benefited from this lifestyle shift, it made sense for me to invest in my internet. Most files I upload or download generally do not go over a gig, and I've been running some tests and working for a couple weeks and everything I do has become a little bit easier and noticeably faster. And the internet has never fully shut off or dropped a device once in two weeks. I also mentioned that I have a cell signal booster on the roof, which does not do much for me. In fact, it rarely will give me more than one bar of LTE, which I can't really do much with. So my phone is always attached to my Wi-Fi and set to Wi-Fi calling, and I have had no issues with multiple phone calls. Now let's discuss these so-called obstacles. The app is telling me I'm gonna have an interruption every single minute. That sounds really bad, right? Well, even if it did happen every single minute, I couldn't notice. During the course of an entire work week, I experienced hardly any issues at all. There were just two times during the course of a week during a Zoom meeting where the screen got glitchy and it said my internet connection was unstable. Outside of that, I have not noticed any issues at all. In the app, you can see how many outages you have, how long they last, how often they occur. And if you look at mine, it looks pretty bad, but again, this has had no impact on what I need to use the internet for. And as far as streaming from YouTube or watching a video on Amazon Prime, there's been no problem. Overall, I'm very pleased with Starlink and I'm gonna keep using it. And I've already canceled my other internet service. The cost is a little bit of a bummer, but if you compare that to, say, the gas money that you would spend on an average commute during a week, it's really not that bad. The initial investment of the equipment is definitely a consideration, but it's relative to your situation. Now, could I gain better speeds if I were to mount this dish at the top of one of those trees? Maybe, but is it worth the hassle and the risk and the added cost of the extra long cable? What if the wind damages the dish? 
What if I need to do maintenance on the dish and I cannot easily reach it? Um, how will it perform in the snow? Which leads me to my closing point. The weather during the past couple weeks of testing has been relatively nice, mostly sunny with a little bit of rain and clouds, but we are right around the corner from a lot of rain and a lot of snow. So in a few months, I'll be able to provide an in-depth review of how Starlink performs in non-ideal weather in the trees. And there's even a possibility I might cut down one or two of those large trees by the cabin. So stay tuned for that. If you want more content like this about living your best life in the woods, consider subscribing. And if you thought this video was helpful or interesting or entertaining, hit that like button and I'll catch you next week. So many settings all the time. Got to be touching stuff. Oh my gosh. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have any idea how nervous I am to have my camera on a tripod on top of the roof? Anyways. Focus. There we go. Quiet, please. Thank you. If you're considering purchasing Starlink,